I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in Latin America. It is December here in Nicaragua, and it is raining on me right now as I speak. So the rainy season is really shifted this year. Normally, we would have been dry weeks ago, but we would have had rain earlier in the year as well, which didn't happen. So it's just a shifted season, it seems, this year, and I think we're overall slightly on the dry side still, but that's just what's going on with that. So it is December, and today I had a really interesting conversation that led me to a really important revelation about how to deal deal with rental properties that may come with a cuidador or a caretaker who is living there as part of the property. Let's talk about that risk and what you might need to consider when you're looking at rental properties here in Nicaragua or really anywhere in Latin America that has this cuidador structure right after that bump. Let's start with a little bit of terminology. Here in Nicaragua, we have a caretaker of a house known as a cuidador. Quite often, they are some part of security, watching over a house, preventing squatters, and in many cases, they may cook, possibly clean, and quite often do some amount of house repairs. A cuidador is a really popular thing that we have all over the country. These will often uh, come with city houses or, or have space for them. For example, here in my house, we have space for a cuidador, but we don't have a live-in cuidador. We have in the past, and sometimes we do, uh, but we have staff that comes during the day and then leaves. We have so many of us that live here full-time. We don't need a cuidador because someone is always here, and if we're going to travel, we have someone come and stay at the house instead. Cuidadors can be a little bit more complicated, but they're very popular. Popular. They're especially popular when you're talking about uh, rental homes or, or part-time homes. A common thing for the wealthy in Nicaragua and much of the region is to have like a beach house or something similar, maybe a house in the mountains or a, uh, a quinta out in the country, like a country house, and you'll have cuidadors that stay there so that they know the place is stocked with food, clean, ready to go, safe, and no squatters at any given time. Cuidadors really help discourage people breaking in and stealing your TV when there's no one living in a place for long periods of time. And that's really common here in Nicaragua, far more common than in the United States and North America where houses are a lot more expensive. So having one that is idle is just less common, still happens, of course. Here, for example, we live near the beach, and so in Las Penitas or Pona Loya, there are a lot of fancy beach houses or, or houses owned by the wealthy. They may not be uh, fancy on their own, and those houses will quite often go for months at a time with nobody using them at all. Uh, I used to live on the beach and walking up and down the beach, half the houses feel like they're abandoned, but all of a sudden, after three months of nothing, you'll see a house completely packed for a weekend with 30, 40 people staying there, big parties, all kinds of equipment being brought in, and it's a family that is just keeping a house for when they want to have big family gatherings, and they've probably owned it for generations. So they don't want to give it up. They keep it. They, they find it to be a good value because they're not very expensive, or at least when they bought them, they were super cheap. And since they already have it, why not hold on to it and just make it part of a family tradition? But to keep those places safe, quite often you want to have a cuidador there. Otherwise, you will get squatters or something like that, right? There's just a lot to go wrong in an unmaintained house. And I know other people who went without cuidadors and got roof damage, like just it wore out over time. They got a little bit of a leak. Once it leaked, water got in and did a little bit of foundation damage and it just escalated from there. One little minor thing when no one's looking at a house can cause a lot to go wrong. When you live in a house and you get a little water spot on the ceiling, you're like, wait, something's wrong and you deal with it right away. No big deal. But when you have a house that is empty, one little leak can turn into flooding, can turn into wall damage, can turn into more leaking, and so forth. And because we have the super dry season where one set of events happen, and then we have the, the wet season where it's raining for six months, it's easy to end up with flooding or termites, all things that are easy to observe when you live in a house. So for lots of reasons, cuidadors are common. Now, when you're looking to rent a house, in most cases, you're renting a property, and if you want a cuidador, you will go out and hire one. Uh, a lot of renters, like uh, expats, are unlikely to go out and seek cuidadors because it's not something we're used to, and we're not quite sure how to interact with them. We're not sure how to hire a good one, and a lot of us are uncomfortable with the idea of people we don't know living on the property with us. But for Nicaraguans, this is absolutely normal, and they often will have grown up with it and think nothing of it. So your mileage is going to vary on this. A lot of expats I do recommend you consider having a cuidador or something akin to that. So again, we have someone who is like a cuidador. They're here every day, but they go home at night most days. But 
they randomly will stay at the house, no problem, um, but they're close family friends, so it's very easy. But we've had cuidadors of our own in the past. Uh, instead, we opt for a security guard who's awake all night. A cuidador would be expected to sleep at night, but they're on the property. So they're much less like active security and much more just like a general presence around the house. So if you're not going to be there for a little while, at least they're home, right? Because quite often, especially with expats or super wealthy who have vacation homes, it's not uncommon to leave your place for a period of time. And you can imagine for us, for example, we live in the house and then, oh, we're going to go back to the United States for Christmas, for example. Now this year and last year, we didn't actually do that. Not all of us. So there was always someone home. But it's easy to imagine a scenario where you're going off on vacation for weeks or a month or going back to the United States to see family for weeks or a month or whatever. And suddenly your house is idle for a period of time. If people know it's idle, it just adds extra risk or you have these weather risks or animals getting in or whatever. We're often finding birds and iguanas and stuff in our house. Of course, we would close it up if we were leaving for a long period of time. But you get the idea. You don't want it to get dirty. You don't want it to get dusty. You don't want to come home to a house that hasn't been kept up and you don't want to be finding a surprise. So having a cuidador can solve that or just have friends who stay at your house. Lots of ways to skin that cat, but it is often solved with a cuidador. So when you are renting a house, often you'll make a decision about having a cuidador. But you also may be in a situation where you're renting a house and the owners include a cuidador. And this can get a little bit complicated in ways that you may not anticipate. And previously, I'd never really thought about it. I'd never wanted a house that came with a cuidador. It's an expense that you really can't get away from. So let's say you're renting a $700 house and you have a $300 cuidador, which is realistically the least that you can pay them. You're now looking at a total cost of $1,000 instead of $700, and that's a major change in price. It's a major change in value as well, of course, and you're providing an important job. This kind of makes you act like an employer, so there's good things about this, a lot of benefits to everybody involved, and most people who do this, they end up with their cuidadors doing some amount of cooking and cleaning and so forth. They're not just idly sitting there for, for $300 a month, so it's often very much appreciated. But there's a big difference between hiring your own cuidador and having one that the owners provide. Of course, the benefits of the owners of a property providing a cuidador is that you don't have to go out and find one. You don't have to negotiate the price. You're just going to be told what it is. Uh, you don't need to worry about finding someone you trust or anything. And just the whole mechanism isn't something on your hands. And especially if you're going to be renting, presumably you're not going to be staying there for 10 years. You're much more likely to be there two to three years at most. But some people will stay much longer. But most people who are renting are only going to be a few years. Uh, so you don't want to necessarily bring someone on and then let them go just because you're moving in and out of renting. And that would make it very difficult to find someone. There aren't very many people who want to do that job without a lot of stability involved because it would be very disruptive to their lives. If they lose their job as a cuidador, they also lose their home because cuidadors means they live in your house or on the estate. Uh, it is very common for their housing to be physically separate from the main building. That is, that is the expectation. It's not hundred percent of the case. Uh, if you're in like, colonial city houses. Normally they're across the courtyard from you. If you're out in uh, a quinta, normally it's an outbuilding or so. If you're out on the beach, normally the uh, owners have a large beach house towards the beach and the cuidadors have a smaller house towards the road. Every place is unique, but those are common approaches. So you, it doesn't mean that they're inside your house. It doesn't mean you're bumping into each other every couple of minutes, depending on the place you have, the place that we have here. It is a completely separate building, but it's a multi-living uh, space structure separate from the main building inside the triple-gated. We often talk about our double-gated space, but it's actually in the triple-gated uh, back garden and uh, and is is tied in with the laundry and storage areas. So they're able to do a lot of the uh, uh, functional parts of the house, a lot of the, the, you know, doing any laundry, doing any moving equipment in and out of the house, getting to and from the kitchen doesn't involve going even past any of the bedrooms or bathrooms in the house. So uh, if they're living in their space uh, and we're living in our space, again, we don't have those people, but if we did, that we would have completely separate lives. And when we did have people, it works out really well to convert that to guest housing as well. It's very easy for us to have guests come and stay because we can have multiple guests with private rooms. Bathrooms are separate out there. They don't even have to have access to the house. So it could be guests we don't even really know that well. And we can lock them into their own space or their own entrances, uh, which is very nice. So if you had guida doors, they could come and go through the garage instead of through the house. And, and it really is kind of separate lives, but sharing this uh, maintenance and, and oversight of the main property. So you may think that getting cuidadors from the owners of a house would be absolutely fantastic, and it does have its benefits, but there are some really big risks that come with that, and we need to go into those because this is pretty surprising and I think will cause you to 
pretty much rule out any place to rent that comes with a Cuidador. And all of us who talked about it this morning, some of the people we're talking to have done this and regret it. So I think this is an important topic for people who are looking at renting here in Nicaragua and throughout the region. The first thing is, is that the cuidadors that you have there are going to be the employees of the owners of the property and not employees of you. Even if you're the ones who are paying them, they were provided by the owners. So they actually are acting like a security system for the owners and not necessarily for you. This can create a conflict of interest on your side, on their side, who knows. But if you're doing something in the house that maybe they don't like, they might report back to the owners, which, okay, that if you don't do things that the owners don't like, that's one way to look at it. But you know, you're throwing a party, do, do you want someone in your house calling the owner of the house? Hey, you know, I, I feel like they had too many beers at this party. Uh, they were a little bit too loud at this party, or I, I don't like the kind of friends they had over. Those aren't really conversations that you want to have. In normal life, especially in North America, we're not used to having spies from the rental people inside your apartment, attending your parties, looking at things. When you're renting a place, it's incredibly private, and what goes on there is legally none of their concern under normal circumstances there are there are exceptions uh, but th there it would be really really rare for someone to make comments in a rental about the type of people or the families that you're inviting or the brand of beer that you're buying or whatever the style of music that you're playing basically you have hours that you're allowed to have music you have uh, volume levels you're allowed to have and as long as you stay within the rules you're good but when you have a cuidador and you have just a person you're renting from you kind of getting into this very personal like I just don't like what they're doing kind of behavior it's a risk and it's not the kind of thing you want to really have. And, and it's just important to remember, this is kind of like having the owners there with you at all times. When you're renting a private place for a weekend, sure, that's different. But if this is a place you're going to be living, having the owners actually have somewhat of a presence inside your home is generally not ideal. It doesn't take much imagination to see how this could become a complicated situation at best and a very nasty one at worst things that would never come up as issues if you didn't have someone watching over your shoulder at every minute could become very large issues when someone is. And just as an example for ourselves, we live in a house, we have dogs. Sometimes those dogs do damage to the house and we secretly have it repaired. To the owner, they couldn't care less because at the end of the day, they're getting a house in perfect condition. But if they have someone here watching it in between, they may be reporting, oh, the dogs are doing damage. This is normal stuff that people do every day. Oh, a little bit of, you know, scratched a wall here, bump something something there, dog scratch something here, and you repair it and, you, and it's fine. And no one is concerned and no one, if you knew at the end that it was going to be repaired, you'd never be concerned. But not knowing that it's gonna be repaired and, and worrying that it happened. And of course the renter is like, well, we're not gonna fix it until we're ready to move out because what if it happens again? It's just wasted money. And the person who owns it is constantly worried, but what if they don't repair it? They, you know, they're just gonna leave and leave me with this problem, right? But if you uh, were a normal renter, no one even is aware of it. It's not a big deal. And we fix these things every day. It's completely normal. So having a cuidador watching over your shoulder presents additional just opportunities for problems in that conversation. But it goes much larger than that, much, much bigger. So in a normal situation, whether it's a, you know, live-in cuidador type person or a full-time worker or a part-time worker in your house, because it could be cleaners or, or chefs or whatever, there is commonly problems with that, whether it's they're just not working up to capacity, they're not doing a good job well, they clean, but it's still dirty, they're taking so long that they're not getting things done. They're just not an employee that you would want to have. In those cases, when it's your own employee, you're able to deal with that pretty easily. But when the person that you're dealing with works for someone else, you have two problems. One is that they have very little incentive to do a great job for you. They may do a good job for the owners of the house when the owners are using the, the house itself or when they're the ones dealing with things. But when they're working for you, why put in that effort? They only have to look good to the main owners. So you may be on the hook for paying for someone, but not have the ability to provide incentives for them to actually be good workers. That's a pretty big problem on its own. You may end up having employees that you'd really rather not have, and you may even feel compelled to get other employees to cover the gaps. Maybe they don't make food that you like, or they don't bother cooking it. They don't feel that they have to do the things that you feel that they should do, and maybe they shouldn't do those things. Maybe it's not part of their agreement for their pay, so you end up then hiring someone to do those things. Now you're paying for two people when you would only need one if you were hiring the people yourself directly. It's all very complicated when you have 
someone else's employee who answers to someone else watching over your house. But there's even a bigger issue with a lot of workers in your house, and this is a sad reality, and I hate to say that there's some kind of commonality to this, but it's a very real problem that comes up, and people who hire house help in home deal with this quite often, is that there's often the potential for things like theft happening in your house. Now, theft can be really simple things. You have a package of cookies, and a few of those cookies disappear, or you have a bunch of uh, food and whole packages of food disappear. You're having a barbecue, and you thought you were making four hamburgers, but suddenly six got made. And, and over time, there's an erosion of the things that you own. And a lot of people that I know who've had workers in their house often report, oh, I bought a special package of treats for myself. I was looking forward to eating them. And oddly, when I went to eat them, I couldn't find them. And you don't always know where they're going. But when you have a lot of different people who work in your house, it doesn't take very much for a package of cookies to disappear. And that's not a very big deal. But when it happens on a regular basis, it does become a very big deal. Like for us, we have uh, teenage children who often save food. They go to the grocery store. It's a big deal. They pick out food. Sometimes they buy expensive food, really special items that they're taking very close care of. They may want to make sure they don't disappear. And they're trying to be very frugal. So they'll be like, ooh, there's a new pack of, you know, specially flavored uh, Coca-Cola Oreos, right? This did not happen with these, but it's a great example. It's a limited time food. They buy a pack, they splurge on it, they save it somewhere. And, and they're my kids especially really hold on to things for a long time. And then after a period of weeks or months, they're like, okay, we're going to make a special thing. We're going to open up this food and we're going to try it together. They always want to try it together, whether with us or with each other. And then be, where did it go? Why is there only half as many as I, I thought, or none of them at all? What happened to them? And it's very often uh, a worker who has been in the house will see them and think, ah, these are cookies that no one's eating or that no one's going to notice, or uh, it's just it's just cookies. Who cares? Or I, maybe they think it's something expensive and special and they just don't care and they take off with it anyway. In all these cases, you end up with things disappearing and it can be impactful on your life. But it's worth noting that in most cases, when small things start disappearing, those small things tend to start becoming larger things. If they go unchecked. But dealing with someone else's employees in your own home can be very difficult. Again, how would you handle this? Do you confront them directly and risk them going to the owners and creating problems for you. They can easily say that you're making it up or whatever. Of course, you can put in security measures like cameras and stuff and try to catch them and have evidence. And But you're in a position of now needing to present evidence to the owners of the house that their employees are stealing from you. And if you're paying them, you know, it gets into an even more complicated situation because they're technically your employees, but you can't fire them because they still live on your property. And it just, it's really complicated. At best, you would have uh, the, the owners of the house still employ them and you just pay the owners of the house for them. So they're actually their employees and you do have a little bit of recourse. So at least then you can go back to the owners and be like, hey, I have on video your employees employees stealing from us, we have a problem. And you could then, you know, go after the owner, at least you really have no legal recourse against someone stealing an Oreo or whatever from you, except for firing them. But you don't have the power to do that if they're not your actual employee and you can't just replace them. And so but the owner of the house, you do have recourse, right? You can go and get, you know, potentially not have to pay rent or whatever, because they have people who are, you know, creating problems for you on property, and you can hold them to the fire on that. So at least it gives you a little bit more power, but then you're in an adversarial situation with the owners of the property. And that's not somewhere you want to be when you're renting there, right? So it's better, but it's not good. But again, like we are talking about snacks, but that has a tendency to become bigger things. So at first, it might be a package of cookies. It might be just an extra bite of food. It might be leftovers that disappear. And in many cases, it's things you may not even notice. And that's almost fine. Like you don't really want to be in a position where it's like, oh, you're working around the house. There was some leftover food. We were thinking about throwing it out. You took a few bites of it. Who cares? Of course, that should be okay, right? I think most of us would agree. But it is a slippery slope. It's a gray area. When does it become way more? Is it when you start taking food out of the pantry? Is it when you start taking your special food out of the pantry? Is it when the most expensive things never make it into the pantry and slip into a pocket? Is it when suddenly they're rifling through your drawers and your loose change is disappearing or the loose uh, small cash or your big cash? And most people who have experienced this report that eventually cash and similar items start going missing. And in some cases, for example, I've had my glasses taken, which is a common thing here. It sounds crazy to people in North America. 
and I'm very careless with my stuff. My glasses were left in a open area of the house where a lot of different workers would come and go. And at some point someone just grabbed my glasses off the table. They're worth a bit. The frames are actually worth a bit. Uh, and so it's, it's a common thing for people to steal and people will steal them on buses. That is not why I have different glasses. These are my old glasses. If you actually pay attention, I was wearing these in the 2021 and some of the 2022 episodes, but it's been so long that when I put these on, even Marcella said, did you get new glasses? And I'm like, no, these are the old ones, <laughs> but I actually like these better. The, these are my good ones. I've been for the last two years wearing my backup copy, uh, pair uh, because I, I don't like them as much and I wanted to wear them out and these were getting a lot of wear so I was letting them go. Altogether I got both like five years ago so I'm actually wearing them out and I need to get new ones but these are much closer to my real prescription than the backup ones so just by putting these on my eyesight is so much better than it has been the last two years. I don't know why I bothered wearing the others at all but they finally broke a little bit. I can wear them but they're uncomfortable and they kind of cut my nose when I wear them for a long period of time like a oh, full day. Uh, so these way more comfortable and still in good shape. So I want to get ones that are really similar to this, but new anyway, but things like glasses and cash will start disappearing and you have to start worrying about things like your phones or your laptops. And it, once it's a pattern, people say, well, you know, someone must have broken in and, and grabbed stuff, but it's often just someone who was already in the house and knew you weren't going to be around for several hours and that they had a big window of time in which no one was going to be there. And of course, even if you have cameras, if it's your cuidadors, they know where your cameras point under normal circumstances. And they're you know expected to be in those parts of the house so that they're there alone is not evidence of anything. So it becomes very difficult to say, oh, someone broke into my house and stole something, you can't make a police report because no one broke in that you know of. And, and what are you going to do? It, it's, a, it's really complicated. So under normal circumstances, protection against this is simply only hiring people that you trust. And I don't mean to make it sound like you shouldn't have cuidadors or you should be seriously concerned about the people who work for you. But as everyone tells me, don't leave cash lying around. Don't leave glasses and other things it's where you could just swipe it and be out the door in two seconds. Think a little bit about where you put things under normal circumstances. That's all you really need to do. You don't need to go to great lengths. You don't need to lock things down. Just don't be stupid. Most of us are used to treating our houses as a place where nobody goes except for us. And that's often true. And here in Nicaragua, that's rarely the case. Houses are a much more public space, not your personal closet, but most of your house is much more of a public space and it's typically much smaller. That's a different thing. So just be careful what you're leaving laying out in the wide open, especially as, as I often say, our house is open. It's not just unlocked. It's open. You can grab half the things we own without going in the door. You can get them from the giant open windows. But if you step in the door, just one or two steps, everything's accessible. It's crazy how much you could get to. So think about that when you have this wide open space. In many ways, our living room is kind of like the outdoors in a lot of ways. In good wind, it rains all through the living room. So not on the TV. We've been very careful about that. But these kinds of things are real world approaches and problems that can come up in this type of environment. And so you just have to think a little bit differently. So don't be super concerned about having a cuidador or a maid or a cook or whatever. Definitely consider hiring people to work in your house but really important power and safety of that is that they are selected by you and hired by you and you have the power to uh, uh, fire them or to at least, you know, talk to them about, look, I, I understand you took some cookies. I'm not angry. Let's not make this a habit. Ask me if you want cookies. 99% of the time, I'm going to say yes. When it's a special thing, I'll say, oh, no, no, not those cookies. I was saving those. Take these cookies that I have plenty of or that I can replenish or that my kids aren't waiting to try, right? It, it, it's not hard. You can be really generous and generally not have it be a problem, uh, but you don't want to be oh, sneak and, and act like you're stealing and then get into a mindset that I don't know what's going on and you can steal things because when does that stop? It's not a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship is, hey, you have a lot more money than me. You have some cookies. I would like some cookies. Would it be okay if I had some cookies? It is completely reasonable for you to give cookies or to be having a hamburger and let your worker have a hamburger too. You're having a steak. Oh, you want some too? Especially if they're your cooker. They have to try your food. That makes sense. So you don't want to be crazy about this. You don't want to be over the top. You don't want to have to put in cameras. You want to be in a position where you have people who've worked for you for a long time that they feel comfortable being around your house. They don't have to worry about being accused of something and you don't have to worry about uh, them doing anything that you can trust them to be alone in your house for a long period of time with access to all of your stuff and never think twice about it, which is where we are now and where we've been in the past. And I've been in situations where I had something go missing, a credit card or something like that, and everybody freaks out and everybody's sure it's the workers in the house. I'm like, I trust these people. 
people. Like I've known them for years. There's no possible way. And everybody kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. And yes, eventually I found the credit card fell into a crack of some some bag or something that I had and it was completely wedged inside the lining or something and it was clear that it just shuffled around when I was walking and I'm so glad I didn't have to wonder or question you know my cuidador whether they had taken it of course they had not taken it right I knew there was no chance of that but everyone's reaction was that that's who must have done it and they were really adamant multiple people and a lot of them Nicaraguense were adamant that that must be who have done it so there's a lot there's often this adversarial relationship that just naturally happens there's another there's a stranger or semi stranger in your home and whenever you lose something well you, instead of you know the natural reaction oh when I live alone I lose things all the time you think immediately did the cuidador move it did they now my my cleaner does constantly move my shoes and clothes into places I can't find they are still in the house I just can't find them of course, I can't find things when I move them either, so it may not be her fault. But the little things like that, you get into this mode of, well, they're constantly moving things and, and it's always their fault, you think at least, it's what we imagine. So when something goes missing, it must be their fault too. You, that's not a good place to be. You wanna be like, hey, I lost my credit card and them not think you're accusing them and be like, hey, let me help you look for it because you're an idiot, you lose things all the time, right? That's what you want. So uh, you can get there, but uh, when you're hiring someone, if you don't have that employment relationship where you're able to have some authority, you could get into a really bad position. So the, my recommendation, because we really talked about this this morning with, with multiple friends of mine who are having this going on and people that have been on the channel, like you really don't want to get into a position where you're renting a house and the cuidador comes with it. You are in such a precarious position and they are now dealing with all of these problems, money is disappearing, food is disappearing, the work is not being done the way that they want it to be done, and they're paying, and they think overpaying for people, and then you also will very commonly get pressured for additional uh, uh, loans or whatever, and this is natural, right? It, it's an economy where people are very underpaid, it's a very low income, uh, the amount of financial power that most of us who are, especially people watching my channel, uh, are likely to have, it's like it's very easy for us to loan one or two months of salary to someone without really thinking too much of it, uh, and so it's it's very natural for, for people to ask for that, especially if they're honestly asking for a loan, they know it's not a huge deal for you, and if they eventually pay you back, even if it takes a while, it hasn't impacted you and it can be life-changing for them. So it's reasonable for you to want to do it, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, we do it all the time, but uh, it's uh, when you're the direct employer, you're the one that are paying them, it becomes natural to come to you with all these things, and this is a whole level of potential social interaction that could be very difficult and stressful for you and could lead to more problems, whereas if you are simply paying the owners and the owners are paying them and you never have a financial transaction, then it's much less likely and much less logical and natural for them to come to you asking for money. They can go to the owners of the house and be like, hey, I need an advance. You're my employer. You give me money. You can and, you know, if, if I take a loan, a common thing, right? Oh, I get paid $300 a month. I would like to take a $300 loan. I'll pay you back at $30 a month for 10 months. Well, when you're the uh, employer, you're able to take that $30 automatically off of every month's payment and, and guarantee that the system, as long as they still work for you, you have a lot of assurance that you're going to get repaid. But as the, if you're a third party, you have no way to have that leverage and, and that money disappears. And they may say, oh, I, I didn't get, you don't know if they're getting paid their full amount. You don't know what's going on. So you don't want to, it's just lots of extra problems that you can avoid. So first recommendation, if you're going to rent a place, do not rent any place. And everyone agreed with this. This is not like, uh, we were pretty sure. No, 100% of people said, I would never ever do, or I would never again rent a place that came with the staff. Won't do it. If you end up in a position where you have to for some reason, or you feel compelled to, or you just, you can't choose another place, it's the only place that's gonna work for you, make sure that the payment comes from the, the owners who are renting you the place and not directly from you. Make sure that you have some legal protections because otherwise you are in such a precarious position that is super, super problematic do what you can to minimize these problems. And this is a whole area. I've lived here for years. We've never thought about this before. I've never had a situation where I knew someone who had a cuidador that came with the house before. I guess I did know people, but it was always like very short-term rentals. But this is people who are living in the house. Uh, this is their their hope is to be there for a long time. They're living there full-time. It's not just a weekend place. Uh, and the combination of things, we've never thought about having a full-time cuidador who basically ends up being the owner of the house and has full run of the house. And it makes them feel like they are 
not it's not their house it's the cuidador's house and they're just hanging out in the nicer rooms that's an awkward situation if you're going to be renting a house you want to feel like it's your house not feel like it's someone else's so that's a thing that you can avoid as well anyway i hope this helps guide you as to better interactions with your potential renters in the future of course this is only for renting like beach places or bigger places if you're just getting like a small normal house it's not going to come up as a thing at all normal people don't run into this but a lot of expats are looking for kind of fancy places or specialty beach places and that's where there are Times when you're going to rent in those especially vacation locations uh, from a house that you know is a family house people are going to have these caretakers who've been there for a long time may have a they often are relatives they often have a lot of pull in the family they often have connections in the community and so very often they are more connected and more powerful than you are uh, and as a renter having someone who has way more control than you in control of your house is a bad situation just avoid it thanks for joining me like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel Got that link above, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.